Hi, I'm Rego Ellis and welcome to Mountain Watch. Well, we all know Japan has some of the best snow in the world. The variety of resorts, the cuisine and the friendly people make it one of the great travel destinations for skiers and snowboarders. There are plenty of resorts to choose from in Japan and classic resorts Japan has four of the best. Hakuba, Nazawa Onsen, Shigakogen and Miyoko. Located in the spectacular Japanese Alps in the prefectures of Nagano and Nagata on the island of Honshu. Over the next four weeks, we'll be checking out these four resorts, bringing you the run down from people who live and work there, accompanied with some spectacular vision which is sure to get you motivated to explore these incredible resorts as soon as you can. First up is Nazawa Onsen, located in Nagano, which gives you world-class skiing in a living, breathing, authentic Japanese village. Alex Parsons has been living and working in Nazawa Onsen for a number of years, and here she is to tell us why she keeps going back. Hey Reggie, thanks, it's awesome to be here. Yeah, I'll just introduce myself. So I'm Alex Parsons. I am a backcountry guide, snowboard instructor, uh, writer, and also a media coordinator for various resorts around the world. So I've done three full-time seasons at Nozawa Onsen. In my last season, I was working for Nozawa Onsen Ski School. The thing that keeps me coming back to Nozawa is just the charm of the place. It's so beautiful. It's a living, breathing Japanese town. The locals are lovely. You can walk through the little cobblestone streets with the snow falling. There's all these temples. It's just a gorgeous place to walk around. It really captures your heart. Perfect day on the hill. Of course, it's gonna be a powder day. You know, grab your mates, get first lifts, and fresh track starting at Yamabiko area, which is at the top of the mountain, and it has some amazing natural half pipes, heaps of tree runs that are totally allowed. From there, we might stop for a coffee, maybe a snack at one of the Japanese restaurants on the hill, and then we're just gonna keep finding fresh tracks all day. The tradition and culture side of Nozawa is really important. One of my favorite things to do is to go to Agama Onsen. So this is not an onsen that you bathe in. This is a cooking onsen and it's locals only. But you can go watch as these adorable old Japanese people come and they put their vegetables in the boiling water and you can just watch it as it cooks and then they'll come back a bit later and pick it up and take it home for dinner. There are some really good food options around Nozawa Onsen. Stacks of Japanese, I'm talking udon, your classic ramen, sushi, soba noodles. And then there's some really cool Western options too. There's a huge variety. Nozawa Onsen is really good for families. There's the amazing Hikage area. So that's this little spot at the bottom of the mountain that's designed for kids. So you have your jumping castle, your zip line, there's like tobogganing, your tube area. And that's also where the ski school goes from. The other good thing is that you still get the full mountain experience as a beginner. So you can catch either one of the gondolas, enjoy that with the kids. And then there's green runs from the top of those two. So the ski school in Nozawa Onsen is one of the oldest ones in Japan, so it's really established. And then as part of that, you have the English speaking ski school and you have instructors from all around the world. The ski school offers family lessons as well as group kid lessons and private kid lessons. So literally whatever stage that your kid is at, um, they can look after them. And if your kid isn't quite up for skiing and snowboarding yet, there's a really good daycare center there as well. The backcountry tours are so sick. So I've been on quite a few in my time and the guys are really professional and very experienced. They know where the best powder snow is essentially. And they can tailor something for whatever your ability is. So whether it is lift access backcountry or one where you skin out for a while, um, they can really make the perfect backcountry day for you. Thanks Alex, and I can see why you love the place. Of course, there's a lot more to Nazawa Onsen, so sit back and relax and enjoy this video presentation, which will give you a taste of what you'll experience when you visit this beautiful part of the world. Hi everyone, this is Miwa from Nazawa Onsen. We look forward to all of you coming. See you next season.
everybody. We're here in Nazawa Onsen in Nagano, Japan. Uh, I'm here with Nagatori YouTube channel. They wanted to give you a bit of an insider look into Nazawa Onsen. Um, so my name is Tia. Um, I've been here for nine seasons now and I live here full time. I'm going to try and show you around a little bit um, some of my favourite places and the reasons why I love Nazawa Onsen. First of all, we're going to take, we're going to go up onto the new gondola. Um, so the coronavirus measures that they've taken for um, is that you, everybody has to wear a mask or an egg tube. They also have um, windows at the top for ventilation and it's also very big so they only let a certain amount of people into each gondola so that there's allow for social distancing. You can see over behind me, you can see Mount Miyoko over to the, the left. And then you can also see Togai Onsen just over there. And the far left, you can also, um, if it was a little clearer, you could see um, Madarao Kogan as well. Um, they're all ski resorts within one hour's drive. So you can also ride those from this point. Um, this gondola is just a new gondola. So it just um, opened last year. Um, so it gives you a different viewpoint of all the mountains. It's really nice view. You know. It also runs on in the summertime as well. Um, if, lots of people think that um, Nizal Onsen is just a winter resort, but summertime is also so beautiful. They run the gondolas for the mountain biking, so people can take their bikes up and then they do mountain biking courses all the way down. So if you're ever around in Japan in the summertime, highly recommend to come to Nizal Onsen then as well. Okay, so we just got off the Nagasaka gondola. The new gondola only takes nine minutes to get to the top, which means that you have a lot more ride time per riding time of the gondola so it's really good for if you want to get lots of laps in. Um, we're going to go to the very top of the mountain so we're going to take another two lifts to get to the top. Okay so we've just made it to the very top of Mount Kanashi. It's 1,650 metres high. Um, from this spot uh, to the very bottom of the mountain is um, 1,000 metres vertical. So the run if you took from here all the way down on the beginner run it's about 10 kilometres long, so very long runs here in Nazawa. There's also um, different points where you can um, take more intermediate runs and expert runs as well. So I think it's really great for families or people skiing together at different levels. You can take the same route but all meet up at different places, or ride different places that meet up at the bottom. Um, unfortunately, the clouds have just come in at the top here, so you can't see, but this is usually the point where you can see from all around with a 360 view. Um, so we're here on Skyline, which is one of my favourite runs. It um, follows the ridge all the way down from the very top to the bottom. And I really like the way that you can see the whole valley and the mountains of the view the whole way down. It's really beautiful. Um, so we made it to Buna and uh, this is my favourite restaurant to eat on the hill because of the view. Unfortunately today you can't really see the view but um, you can see the windows on the restaurant allows you to see over the valley and it's really beautiful. Okay, all the places in town have hand sanitizers. Please make sure you do that in the, on the way into the restaurant. This restaurant's been running for 34 years so it's very popular around the town. Um, the curries in, in Buna is really delicious. I'm going to get the curry with the katsu, which is a pork cutlet, and an onsen egg. Mm. I got the onsen tamago. I'm going to show you how to cook it later. So now we're at the Hikage area. Um, there's a ski school and information center in there. We're going to take a lift now and to get to the top of the zip line. Ah. 
So the zip line is 652 metres long and um, the elevation is 122 metres. So apparently you can get up to 72 kilometres on it. It's my first time, so I'm super excited. Hi, three, come on. Oh, okay. Three, two, one. That was actually pretty fun. That was fast. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> so close to the uh, zip line center, the Chicago center, is a um, nice coffee shop over here. Let's go get a coffee. So we're just at Shichirohe Cof uh, Cafe on Hikage. They also have a um, downstairs, they have a rental shop where you can rent your gear and that means that you can leave all your gear up here so you don't have to walk up and down the hill. Have a little coffee and cookie break before we go down the hill. So we've just been um, to the coffee that we're at the Kage Centre and we're going to take the U Road down which is a moving walkway that goes into a different part of town. So we're going to go and take that now. Okay, here we go. So we've made it to the bottom of the, the U Road um, and now we're going to go have an onsen. So one of the best things about being in Nizawa Onsen is that after a Ski, after you ski or snowboard, you can have an onsen. Um, there's 13 natural spring onsens in the town that are completely free. Um, so we're going to take an onsen at this one, which is called Kuma no Te Arayu. Um, so the actual translation for that is um, bare washing hands, because it's said that um, years ago, somebody first found a bear washing their hand um, as, as a wound there. So it was bathing in the onsen to heal it. So lots of people, if they get burns or if they have any skin problems, they say that this is the best onsen to come to for your skin. So just on the opposite side of the onsen, um, there's these little boxes here. It's got hot water in here that's 75 degrees Celsius. Um, and you can cook eggs in here. So you put them in, set a timer on your phone for this one's 14 minutes. Go have an onsen and then come back out and they're ready to eat. So this is what it looks like once it's cooked. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, I got it. So, when you're inside the onsen, put your shoes on the rack when you step onto the wooden plate. Um, and then each onsen will have a section like this. So you take all of your clothes off until you're completely naked put them in here. Um, this one's got um, blocks out so, so that not so many people can have it because of the corona at, the, at this time. Um, and then once you're completely naked, you walk down to here and on the side of uh, the bar, you use the bucket to wash yourself. And once you're completely clean, then you get into the bar. So both baths, this one has two baths. So one's a little bit cooler than the other one. This one's hotter than this one is. They change temperature depending on how many people have been in the onsen. But they range from about 43 degrees to 47 degrees. So it's really good for after your onsen for your muscles. So here we are in the main street, which is called Oyu Street. Um, we're going to stop in and have a little sweet snack after our onsen. We're gonna have agepan, which is uh, fried bread with cinnamon. Here you go, here's your popo latte thank you. and your uh, kinoko agepa, yeah, deep fried bread. Thank you. This is a very traditional flavor in Japan, it's called kinako. Mm. Kinako is a soybean powder, mm. uh, it's very commonly used in Japanese wagashi, which is Japanese uh, treat. Yeah. Uh, and then this one's a little bit more traditional for the western side, uh, cinnamon sugar. Yum, and then you. we've got our popo latte, which is popo bunyu, um, local uh, source milk. I'm going to start with this one. Mm. That's nice. It's really good. Mm-hmm. I like this. Mm -hmm. 
and have a look in the shop. Oh, wow. Okay. Nagatari! So now we're in the main street. We're in the main street again where we just had the, the buns. Um, on the left we've got a supermarket. This is the main supermarket in town. And then on the right we've got Nanda Monja, which is a souvenir shop. Um, they also make, uh, they print their own t-shirts and jumpers so you can get something printed and it's ready by the next day. Tommy on the right, which is a liquor store. Liquor and snacks and some drinks in there. We have another Omiyage souvenir shop on the left. Okay, so this is uh, Oyu Onsen, so it's at the end of the main street. Uh, it's probably the most beautiful looking onsen of the 13 free onsens, and it's got very old architecture. So now uh, at the end of the main street, we're gonna go up this road here to Ogama. We've made it to Ogama. Um, so this is where the onsen water starts from and then filters down to the rest of the onsens that are in town. Um, it's also a cooking onsen. It's for locals only to do, but um, people come and they use the really hot water to do just like the, we did before with the eggs, or they'll you do the nozawana here as well, or different vegetables, whichever that they do. They um, rope it off for locals only so that people don't get caught thinking that it's a normal onsen because this one's actually at 90 degrees so it's a little bit hot to get into. Okay so now we're going to start from showing you some restaurants um, for dinner but first of all we're going to stop at Ivy for some cheese and wine. Uh, a red? Red? <laughs> Do you like a dry wine, sweet wine? Start with the lightest, the Montepulciano. This one is a Nero Diavola, it's a Sicilian red. It's a little bit bigger than the last. The last of the pouring ones, this is the biggest of the three for sure. Mm -hmm. This is a Syrah Malbec. Maybe you can have a go on, please? Yes. So we have a homemade fruit slice. This is a house-made apple ginger jam with almonds. Some muscatels. This is the blue camembert. Some house-marinated olives. This is a parma jamón from Spain. And some house-pickled onions. Itadakimasu! Oh, good. Mm. This is the house marinated mushrooms mm. with goat's cheese. So nice to have um, cheese and wine. So I think a great thing about Nazal Onsen is once you're actually here, it's really easy to get around from one end of the town to the other end of the town, um, from the gondola to the accommodations and the restaurants is all within about 15 minutes walk. So I hope that you've enjoyed the little tour around the Zao Onsen. Um, it's a really beautiful town. So the fact that you can walk around everywhere, um, you can ski an onsen. Um, it's a really small town so it's got it's really got a really homely feeling to it. It's got really nice vibes. So I hope that you can make it to Nazal Onsen. Um, in Nazal Onsen there's so many good restaurants that you can eat at. There's really really good Japanese local restaurants, um, but you also have a bit of international food like this, so um, you've got lots of other restaurants that you can choose in big variety that you can eat. Um, I hope that today's been a good example of what a day in Nazar onsen looks like for you. Um, skiing and onsen and apre and also dinner. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, Naka Tori. YouTube channel. Um, if you like it, please press like or subscribe to the channel. Thank you. Well, we hope you enjoyed our winter presentation on Nazawa Onsen. Of course, the mountains are beautiful all year round, so if you get the chance to visit Nazawa Onsen during the summer, make sure you do. The green season is something you'll never forget.